my name is Mel Brown. Welcome to episode 56 of my crafting podcast. This is my weekly, at the moment, vlog about knitting, crochet, spinning, weaving, dyeing, anything else that seems like a good idea at the time. I'm an autistic woman living in the north of England with my husband, our three daughters and three cats. Um, you can find me on social media in these places. I hope that's a big enough space. Um, I'm hoping the light's going to be better in here today to show you the colours. As you don't know, I do like my colours. So, um, lots to show you again today. Um, this weekly podcast puts me under a lot of pressure um, to get things done, but actually uh, that's good because <laughs> I'm enjoying it. So, where are we? Let's start off with, oh, I think I'm going to knock the camera there. Careful. Um, where are they now? What's happened to the projects you've already seen? Well, first off, the advent blanket. So, last week I had lock nine um, put together and I had just started on the border, pinned things together today that I wanted to show you. So, block nine is now complete. As you can see, it hasn't been blocked yet. What I've been doing is waiting until I've got two and then blocking them together. I don't know why. Um, so this is block nine and I want 12, um, that's what I think I want anyway. Um, I don't think I'll know for certain until I've actually got them and I put them down together. But So there it is. Um, and I also, I forgot to show you last week, as soon as I finished those skews, um, I ran off two five gram minis for the two people that I'm making advent calendars for this year. And then I made this. <laughs> I wasted no time whatsoever in making this. Um, so that's the um, Easy Knits uh, oh, what's this? Twinkle um, in the colourway Solaris. So um, also, um, I showed you last week a little mini that I dyed on a milk bottle to try and get a gradient. Uh, well, I made that into a square as well. I think that's quite, I, I like the way that's come out. It's much more subtle than I expected, but that's okay. So that's two more squares. So, um, yeah, it's I've got enough squares now for block ten, but I tend to give to have uh, more than the nine. It's like twelve, fifteen. So my daughter gets a chance to choose which one she wants. Um, and then, so yeah, I've probably only got another eighteen squares to make, I would think. And then obviously I'll see if it is the right size. So I'm drinking green tea again this morning. I feel so thirsty. Right, okay. That's good. I don't think the notes over there is going to work very well because I'm going to have to keep looking over there, which is going to be very annoying. Okay, so Starburst, I'm not even going to consider it a whip at the moment, a work in progress, because I'm not working on it. And it's not a piece that's unfinished. It's just lots of little pieces and I haven't done any more. I still don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, I just I don't want to abandon it because I just enjoy it so much. It's just one of those little things, a bit like the hope uh, squares. You know the I'll talk about more about that, but it's a bit like that. It's just I do one whenever I feel like it. Oh, sorry. Sit still now. Okay, so rainbows in the fluff. This is the pattern diamonds in the fluff, and it's to knit along the lockdown rainbow cow. So uh, I have it on very good authority that I have a prize on its way to me um, for that, which is going to be very exciting. What I'll do then is I'll just draw from anybody who started a project. I, I'm not worried about whether you finished it or not. Um, so here are mine. So I'm using the pattern Diamonds in the Fluff, but I'm only using the stitch pattern. I'm not using the actual um, sock pattern. Now, uh, the cabling is actually pulling the socks in quite a bit so they look really skinny don't they uh, they certainly look skinnier than my socks normally do particularly on the top obviously because you're not just got the um it pulling for half of the stitches it's pulling for all the stitches i tried it on last night and it was tricky to get it on but i'm not worried about that because <clears throat> excuse me i would much rather have a sock that's a little bit tight than a sock that's a little bit loose because i can't stand it when my socks fall down or the heel gets kind of baggy and comes up to the back of your heel or oh, don't like that um, so even if it might mean they don't last as long because they're tight because the fabric is stretched I don't care I'll just make more so here they are um, I'm on my fifth color 
because of course this is just uh, so just it's not part of the set it's from uh, Mocky and the Squid and these are Woolly uh, Goodness Yarns uh, mini rainbow mini set so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the orange um, on the pattern and then I will switch to the last remaining colour which is the red so it's more of a pink really that was okay um, and I'll do the ribbon that now I have decided what to do about that I do like a one by one twisted rib or a half twisted rib um, but actually I'm going to be doing about an inch uh, no sorry about two inches of rib so I'm going to make it a bit easier on myself I'm going to do a two by two standard rib um, so when the orange is finished and there's how much of that left how much of that left and then I'll start on the pinky red and I'll do a two by two rib until the yarn is finished so I'm not finished with it so it's way way too early to worry about not taking part if you want to take part please do just use the hashtag here on uh, and Instagram put your po posters on post your pictures if you uh, want to start something um, anything rainbow ideally socks during the lockdown or well, lockdown does not look like it's going to be stopping anytime soon so do crack on and just start something um, it's fun so very happy with that project very happy with the pattern very happy with the yarn the variegation in the woolly goodness yarns um, colors is beautiful I'm so getting into that not just tonal but really kind of yeah, variegated within a colour thing. I was a bit funny about what yarns are like. Very happy with that. Right, next, the Van Gogh. Mm. Now, when I last spoke to you, I had frogged it and restarted because I didn't like carrying the yarn up the side. So um, I continued with it and then I ran out of orange yarn. So um, this is where I was when I last to you and I got up to here um, yeah and it's quite big isn't it but it's not big enough yet to it's not big enough to use as a as a any kind of thing I want it to be big and chunky so um, I have got orange left I've, it, I've disconnected it because you do at the end of the section but that's all I've got left um, it's probably not enough for another section um, but I do have plenty of the grey left I'm not sure you can see that inside the bag can you I'm a bit funny about putting my balls in bags because I hate it when balls get in the mess so there's quite a lot of the grey left I haven't weighed it but I would say there's probably half of what I started with left um, even though I'm doing more sorry about the rustling more on the grey sections than the pattern suggests I've actually used way more of the orange. Now I'm puzzled because on the in the pattern, when you look at the picture, this section is actually really quite small. It's it's no bigger than the grey section, that the um background section. Well, my background section is a, quarter, a third again as big because instead of doing uh, six rows, I'm doing eight rows. Um, so my this section should be bigger than this, but it's not. And I haven't even blocked it to open these up, so I'm very confused. Anyway, there it is. I love it. I mean, it, look at that. It is pretty beautiful, isn't it? But um, my friend Adriana is finishing it with me and she's using hand spun as well. And hers is a kind of gradient. It's getting darker. And I was quite jealous of that because it does look pretty good. So when I ran out, I thought, OK, I'll have to dye some more. Uh, I'm pretty confident that the orange was Corriedale. I know the grey is. So I've still got some of that grey undyed. <clears throat> so I uh, dyed some more yarn for that. I will show you that in the yarn dyeing section. In case uh, you're thinking, oh, I'm not sure I want to watch all these sections, um, down below I've put time stamps to say if you just want to skip certain bits, you're very welcome to. I do, I do ramble on and talk about a lot of different things. So that's been halted for a while while I prepare for um, the next bit. Um, I have dyed it, I'll show you that in a bit. I then need to spin it, obviously, fly it, wash it, and then I can start knitting again. So that's kind of on hold. But I like it. I really like it. It's a great big long garter rose again, which is a bit tedious, but it's 
eight millimeter needle so it goes fast. Okay. Um, I did something really stupid though. On Sunday, I was just cutting off the yarn at the end of a thingy bob, you know, as you do. And I had a great big long pair of scissors and as well as cutting through the yarn, I managed to cut through two of these. I know, unbelievably stupid. Um, so what I did, I'm trying to see if I can find it. What I did was I just pulled them together and pulled them out of those a little bit and I knotted them. And then I tried to get the knot to go into this bit. <laughs> what a stupid thing to do. Have you ever done that? Really? I mean, it was stupid. So I don't think anybody will notice. It's all part of the... <sighs> okay, right. Golden Willow. Now this is a pattern by Leslie Comstock. And it is um, lots and lots of different types of brioche. Um, and I'm using the most gorgeous yarns. Uh, if I can get them all done. Fine fish yarns. And it's yak in three different colourways. 65% merino, 20% silk and 15% yak. Yeah, it's soft as kittens. It is amazing. So I had done the first, oh lordy, I can't remember what I showed you last time. So if I'm repeating myself, you'll have to forgive me. <laughs> we'll find one needle and I can't find the rest of the project. If I yank it, I'm going to end up with it all coming off the needles. Here we go. So it's not much bigger, to be honest. I'm only working on it on Sunday when I'm on my own in a room. <laughs> so this was honeycomb brioche in one colour and this was honeycomb brioche in a second colour but because my two of my colours were so similar you can't see the difference. This is a lifeline because I bottled it and <laughs> I got scared. This is pearl brioche in two colours but you wouldn't really know. A just a bit disappointing but um, that's okay because the other end of the shawl when we did come to do this again it's with the, um, the yellow mustard yellow. Again, it's in a bag, um, so it'll show better because there's a blue and a purple, um, which you can't really see. But I like it. I like the brioche and I like the pattern. It's really strange because you, on one row, you make brioche stitches and the next row you get rid of them. Um, it's just really strange. But yeah, I'm enjoying it and I love the feel of the fabric. Oh, it's just so soft. I'm going to love wearing this. Um, yeah, I really, really enjoy it, but it's a very slow project, so I've really got to concentrate on it. Well, maybe I don't really need, I don't know. Um, at the moment, uh, uh, jumping ahead a bit, but um, as I said, I'm autistic and we are in lockdown at the moment, so I don't get to be on my own. Um, I can sometimes go, uh, in normal times, I've got a friend who has an apartment in a village nearby, and I can just go and spend the day there. That is so good for my soul. Um, and on other days people go out to school or to work or whatever and I get to be on my own. None of that is happening now. You know, please don't think don't think I'm asking for you to feel sorry for me. Not in the slightest. I am very, very fortunate um, in this particular situation. But this is one issue I have and being autistic it builds up over time and it becomes a problem. So last Sunday, not the one just gone on before, I just I had, had such a bad headache on the Saturday and that's a good indicator to me that I've unpeopled out. So I went to my husband's office, which is a tiny bedroom that used to be our youngest daughter's bedroom. And I shut the door and I stayed, I stayed all, there, there. all day um, and uh, just drank tea and popped the loo when I needed to. And I worked on projects and it was exactly what I needed. Uh, I felt so much better in the evening. And then on Monday, I was so full of energy because that's what I needed. So last Sunday, we did the same again. In fact, the whole family kind of enjoyed it. Um, my daughter, my eldest daughter, is a little bit autistic as well. She wouldn't um, reach threshold on the diagnosis. Uh, and my third child, daughter is third, diagnosed autistic. Um, so, and my husband's, you know, he's a bloke. He, he lives with four females. So time on his own for him is very beneficial. So um, I think we might just have that as our Sunday tradition from now for a while. And it's good for me as well, because it means I don't eat all day, which is fine, it's not a problem for me. Um, and despite what we've been told by the health professionals for 40 years, actually it's really good for your body to have a whole day without eating. Um, so 
it's good uh, and, and it works for me. So anyway, this is the only time that I work on it when I'm in there on a Sunday. Um, and it, in a way, that's kind of like a little ritual. And that's another insight into the mind of an autistic person. Um, we're all different, but for a lot of us, um, rituals and repeating patterns are very, very comforting. Um, and for me, that at the moment, what's working for me on a Sunday is being there, in there all day. And then on a Sunday evening, I come out, um, help make dinner, have a gin and tonic with Dave. I didn't drink for two years, but this lockdown has pushed me a bit. Um, and then uh, a quiet evening together, just, you know, watch something that's recorded from the TV. So that ritual is really, really working for me. Um, so that's basically what this will be. It'll be my Sunday project um, and it'll go on for a long time and I'm very happy for it to do so. Sorry, I'm rambling a little bit. Um, if you were thinking, oh, I don't want to want to put this into all that personal stuff. I just want to do the knitting and crochet. Then I've really messed you up, haven't I? Sorry. Okay. Um, if it's a bit stop starty, it's because this is an old laptop that I'm recording on. And every now and then I look at the ca camera and realise that it's frozen. So I've got to stop, try and work out when it froze and start again from there. Okay. So that's all the works in progress that you have already seen. New whips on the block. Let's have a quick look. Um, I did another one of these. I can't resist it. I just, the pattern is just so enjoyable. Um, and I just did it slightly different. This time at this edge, um, I've done it in a half treble crochet, which for the US people is a half double. Um, and I, I did that because me and the person I'm giving it to both really like half treble crochet borders. <laughs> And it, I think it's perfect. Um, it's exactly the same colours as last time, but this one is actually a purple, and the person I'm giving it to's favourite colour is purple. So um, it's just oh, if you haven't tried it and you're inter and you crochet, you're interested in trying um, Tunisia mosaic crochet. It's by Tina Thorodstotti. Now she is a very talented designer who's made some really awesome patterns. And this one, because of the current crisis and all that's going on she's done it for free now she puts a lot of effort into her patterns um and the the pdfs that come with it are pretty detailed so to give it away for free is is a pretty big thing really um so it's a free pattern and it's very well written the pdf is very good and it's beautiful obviously you can do anything you want with it you can then uh crochet them together you can use it as a coaster you can do all you like i tried to display them in the window in place of the um rainbows that people are putting up but it didn't really show in our window so okay so that's for Andrea uh, I'm seeing her tomorrow I'm going to be flying past her house more or less on the way to pick up my groceries so I am going to throw it at her from a safe distance um, and she's going to catch it so um, that's hope and I also started and finished something else my local library um, in Harrogate um, I teach there, um, this is part of the pro bono arm of my business. Um, I teach there, um, I, I'll teach a day to teach sort of 10 women how to crochet. And then on a monthly basis, we meet twice a month. Um, and it's just a crochet club. So people come along, they bring their projects. Um, I help them with it. I help them choose projects. I help them get started with the projects. Um, I'll often teach a new technique. We did foundation double crochets and foundation stitches um, last time we were together before the lockdown. Um, and so I'm, I'm quite involved with the library. I've also done um, weaving for autistic children there. So um, they asked me, uh, what they wanted to do is a yarn bobbing project. So when the library reopens, they want to have 100 small crocheted items just stashed around the library in different places and people could just find one and take it home so she wanted a hundred small things so i've got my um my group on it um and andrea's made one or two things already um the library attendees a group are on it as well and i made this little fella this is in some volmeister uh that linda gave me years and years ago that i used to make a wonderful pair of f of f socks this is some of the leftovers because the Volmeister skeins are 150 grams. So you get an awful lot of yarn for you in your skein. So there he is. Isn't he cute? It's a really lovely pattern. Uh, it's a free pattern. The problem is when I showed it to my daughters, 
it wasn't even finished yet. It had only had four or five tentacles, tentacles, legs. Um, they fell in love with it. Now this is not my little daughter. This is my 17 and 19 year old daughters. Both want one. So my 17 year old wants one in that, which is a very old yarn I've had for many years that came to the house clearance. I don't know what it is. And this is one that my youngest daughter died. I'm going to come back to her dying soon, her yarn dying. Um, so it's just a kind of um, lovely, subtle, different shades of, of blue. So that's for my oldest daughter. So I need to make two more of those, which is just, you know, that's how it is. So that's brilliant. That's all of the knitting and the crochet. Okay, let's have a slug of tea and then we can move on to spinning. Right, so I've got a Magicraft uh, Pioneer, which is now, well, it's going to be mine. I haven't paid Andrew for it, but I will. And um, it's wonderful and I love it. It's, it's got, uh, it's perfect for making art yarn. But my drive band broke and it just, it just snapped. Um, I ordered another one and it hasn't come yet. And it was Royal Mail, which is, um, for those of you who don't live in the UK, our national uh, mail carrier. They are under immense pressure. I know somebody who works for them and it's like Christmas pressure constantly at the moment. It's an absolute nightmare for them all. Um, and it hasn't come yet and it's been for 10 days, I think. So I'm just waiting for it and getting very frustrated because I love my will and I want to use it. So I actually made a drive band. Gemma, I was talking to Gemma, you know, Gemma B Makes podcast. Um, and she said, why don't you just make one? Mm, that's smart. So I just made one out of cotton yarn. Um, it was enough to be able to spin once when there was a big amount on the bobbin. Um, but when I tried to ply, it, it was a mess. And then when I tried to spin again on an empty bobbin, no go, it just kept slipping. So um, I managed to finish a project on it. So uh, I t showed you, I'll try not to knock the camera. I just burped at you then, I don't know if you heard that, but I really hope you didn't. So I showed you last week that I had started spinning the North Ronald Z East that a friend sent to me. It's 100 grams, it'd been washed and carded, um, but it hadn't been, uh, hadn't had anything more. So it's quite, um, it was quite an interesting experience. I haven't really spun any fleece before. Um, so I just put it on the wheel and decided to let it decide what it wanted and it wanted to be quite fine. And it was quite fine. I spun um, the the whole bobbin. It's a big bobbin. It's a, um, a what do you call it, jumbo flyer and a big bobbin. So I managed to spin the whole bobbin and then I wound that into a ball, um, which you saw at the beginning of the video. And then I plied it. Now the plying wasn't the best, as I said, I struggled with the wheel. But here it is. So, yeah. Now if you're thinking, crikey, last time I saw it, it was grey and now it's grey and purple. I'll come on to that. So it's not bad. It's not my best work, um, but it's not bad. Um, and the plan is, I've dyed it purple, more or less, um, and I'm going to post it to the lady who gave me the fleece, that she can knit with it. Um, it still smells so chic. So um, that is that, I'll post that this week, just to add to the carnage at the post office, I will post that. Right, um, and then, yeah oh then I suddenly remembered that I have a working wheel my Ashford Traveller which is right here it's not a Traveller it's traditional Ashford traditional is in perfect working order I just haven't used it for a while I say perfect working order the drive bank keeps leaking off mid spin uh, but other than that it works and I thought crikey why don't I just use that so I grabbed a braid of fibre, I think I showed that at the beginning but I'll show you again now. So it was, oh I think I've got a little band over here. 
Yeah, I have. I'm not that happy. Here we go. So it's Wensleydale in silk. Can you see that? Um, and oh, the colours are so beautiful. I absolutely loved it. I saw it first on the stand at Yarndale in September. Um, and I saw it in the yak base and it was so, it was much darker. And then I saw it in the Wensleydale and silk base and that was it. I fell in love. Um, oh, here it is. Um, so I spun, I tore the braid down the middle and then I tried to spin, um, just straight down, which for those of you who do spin kind of involves spinning across the top. So you've got your piece of fiber and rather than just breaking it like that, and I wanted to, um, spin each color um, and that didn't work out too well I think it's because the staple length of the silk is so long um, it just wasn't wouldn't let me tell it what to do so I'd be trying to spin from this side over to this side and it would just be going no I'm gonna go down here so what I did in the end I got some advice from Andrea and she said just I would just break it into chunks so again because of the long stable staple length it's hard to break into accurate chunks but um, sometimes I'd managed to uh, just sort of break it off and restart where I wanted to and sometimes I broke it into chunks but I more or less preserved um, the original long um, sections of colour and it, I washed it yesterday I was very careful with it I didn't want to thwack it I just felt like it was delicate Andrew says no it's not delicate it's got theatre on the silk it's fine but I felt like it was delicate so I didn't do too much to it now bear in mind my skeining is appalling but here we go can't really see the sheen on it but it is beautiful and there are long passages that are all one color so there's a kind of there's a green and a darker purple and a lighter purple and there are it's exactly the way I wanted it to be there's long passages where both plies are the same color and lots where you get barbershop polling barber polling don't know what you call it that so I haven't worked out what weight it is yet as in what grist um it's obviously variable i've got one immense slub in it i can't, can't see it right now but the biggest slub you can imagine great big chunk and, and most um spinners would have just you know stopped that got and gone back and redone it but actually i just left it in um and i'm i'm fine with that it's, it's a real character thing so it's not quite dry um i love it I really really love it I think it's the most beautiful yarn I've ever made and it feels soft and it's still damp I need to get it back on the radiator actually um, I love it really really love it um, I'm so excited that uh, Cat and Sparrow it's Rachel from Cat and Sparrow she's so lovely um, she's got a couple of uh, packs from the um, festival fiber club she did and she, she's got a couple left over so she sent me those I'm really looking forward to getting those um and yeah that's going to be pretty exciting so i'll show you that as when i get it um but yeah i just i'm really really excited about that and i think i'm going to be using a lot more of cat and sparrow's um fiber because i just think it's so good right okay um oh yeah i also i got this idea i can't remember where i got this idea from but uh, about making mini bats so um, you know normally you'd buy a 100 gram bat and it's just all blended on a card or a uh, drum card and it's um i've never really been excited by bats first couple of um pieces of fiber i had were both 100 gram bats but after that i haven't bought them but now again as it's changed everything doing spinning for art weaving um i've been more interested in the idea of um bats but i don't have a drum card and i'm not inclined to get one so <clears throat> I thought, why don't I make a mini bat? So I had a look as a uh, Mina from the um, Knitting Expats podcast. She um, she did a video on it. So I had a look and I made three little mini bats. So she said that her she'd got a homemade um, blending board, uh, but it took about thirty grams. She said so. I weighed, worked out thirty grams for three different friends of mine, and I looked at the colours I'd got. And again, I seem to have amassed a massive array of different fibers um the colors that they like and i blended them together and then um tried to get them off the blending board without messing them up um 
and I made three. Now Andrea swung by here to give me some extra bobbins for the Magicraft um, the other day and I gave her hers, so I can't show you that. But this is the one that I made for Sarah. So it's pretty, isn't it? It's not the best made bat and it's not going to be the easiest thing to spin or whatever, but it is so pretty. And this is the one that I made for Gemma. Yes, this is definitely for Gemma because she's got some um, John Arban fibre in this kind of mustard colour. Um, this one is purple and green, which are Sarah's favourite colours. And this one has got this mustard and this lovely teal. Yeah, really, really pleased with it. And I've just got some old some ribbon that came with something and yeah, we're using it. So really, really enjoyed that. Um, I must make one for myself actually. So I would definitely recommend that as a, if you've got a blending ball but not a, um, a drum card. Really, really good fun. Oh. Okay, there was some silk. I found this little sample of um, silk and uh, sorry silk and various bits and pieces that I put into um, Andrea's. Really, really um, glorious stuff. Okay, so that's the spinning. Let's go on to dyeing. So you have already seen this bit that I did. Um, very, very basic. Um, I wanted to preserve the character of the fleece, but I also wanted to give it a hint of purple because that's um, her favorite color. A lot of people have a favorite color purple, don't they? Um, so yeah, it's a very basic, just dropped it in wet um, and plenty of citric acid so that it took quickly and then just let it sit in and then push it to the last bit. So there are bits that the dye hasn't really touched. Um, so that was very basic. Now the giveaway, Anita Smith from The Craftsmith won the second giveaway, the Instagram one. And she asked me to dye, she said either teal or pink with purple and green speckles. This is the um, AC Wood Specialty Fibres, also known as yarnundyed.net. Um, gorgeous extra fine merino and cashmere that they sent me by mistake and generously said keep. So I am giving it away. Um, so that's what uh, Anita requested and this is what she's getting. So pinks, there's purple speckles there, it's looking to around the bottom. Hmm. So Oh yeah, there's some Christmas stuff. Yeah, the camera's not really picking them up. So what I did first was I uh, I dip dyed the skein in Wilton's pink. So there are some bits which are dark pink and then it slowly fades into um, what was left. And then I got some, I put it on a plate, still wet, and I got some Kool-Aid. Now I had Kool-Aid in two colours, green and purple, which was great. Unfortunately, I opened the packet for purple, it was empty. So I sprinkled on the green ones um, and that took really nicely. And then once that seemed to have been run its course, I then actually found some Easter egg pellets that my friend Kathy from America had sent me. And there was a purple one of those. So I crushed that between two spoons that you used to do with um, aspirin if you couldn't take um, pills. Um, and I sprinkled that on. Now that was fine, except that's a lot stronger than the um, Kool-Aid and it started to break. Can you see that it's purple but the blues have started to come out and I don't know where the reds went so much. Um, but yeah, so it started to spread out and I thought, oh, that's not speckly anymore. So I whipped it out quickly and washed it. But it's, it's, it does what it says on the tin. It's got green speckles and purple speckles and it is definitely pink. So uh, Anita, that's your yarn. I have your address now I have shown it. I will post it to you. Um, and again, let's um, apologise to the posties for putting them under even more pressure. So, I really enjoyed doing that. Uh, speckles aren't my thing at all, so I really don't do them. So it's really quite nice to do something completely different. So I still haven't decided what to do with the other two skeins, um, but I'd love to do something like this again because it was fun. Um, and yes, the fibre for the Van Gogh. So um, I got 100 grams of Corydale. I now have a lovely big... Um, supply of undyed fibre to play with and I've got 100 grams of the Corydale and I dyed it. So I dyed it first of all I put red and some yellow in to make it orange but it wasn't 
what I wanted. So I put some more red in. As you can see, there's some quite dark spots here. Um, that's looking pink. It's not really pink in real life. It's largely light and dark orange and then some deep reds. So let me remind you what that's going to be with. It's going to be the far end of this. It, that's, I don't like the... So, there we go. So it's going to look, yeah, it's going to be obviously a different batch, but you know, you know me, don't be monkeys. I don't even know who this is for, actually. I don't think it's for me. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I guess I'll find out when I've done it. So yeah, that was the other piece of dyeing I did. Um, I just, I just love being able to just think, oh, I just want to buy something. So I just pick it up, go out and do it and it's done done so quickly now um it's not as fluffy as it was um when i first put it in the pot so what i need to do is just give it a bit a bit more prep um a bit of opening up this always happens with dyed fiber for me anybody else able to dye fiber and not make it like this it's not felted it's not compacted it's just a little bit more um firm so that's no problem i've i've spun um fiber that's a lot worse than that so I don't have any particular plan with it. I will just spin half of the weight of it onto a bobbin and then spin, spin the other half of the weight. Actually, one thing that was really successful, it's the spinning thing. I'll cross pollinate here and talk about the spinning again. Um, oh my gosh, I'm looking for my scale. Oh, there it is. Um, I had two bobbins and I knew, I already knew that the bobbin I'd spun on the first day was finer than the bobbin I spun on the second day. I just knew that. So it was half the weight effectively, but it was way different. It may have been half the weight because I kind of split it down the middle on the sort of line that it wanted to split. So it might not have been exactly half. But anyway, you know me, I'm not exact about these things. So I spun the two, apply the two bobbins together. And then the, the first bobbin had a lot more left on it. So what I did is something that Grace Shalom Hopkins, she's a great YouTuber, does, which is um, a plying ball. So basically I used my... Uh, ball winder to wind it into a centre pool ball and then I used both ends and plied them together and it's a really interesting method you have to, to keep control of the ball very carefully if you just let it drop it gets in a terrible mess but if you keep it in your hand and what it means is you don't get any any loss at the end something to throw away nothing that doesn't have a purpose because you've got two ends in the end you've got a loop at the end and you use every single bit of it now if you do, are doing a planned um colour sequence obviously it completely messes that up and I'd already completely messed it up effectively because um, my green section here and my green section here were very different lengths so even if it started at the same point they didn't finish at the same point so you know um, but actually the, because the sections was I spun it quite fine but the sections were quite long there were long period passages where the colours the same colour overlapped in both pairs anyway I'm wittering sorry so um, that's that I'm not going to do any thoughtful stuff I'm just gonna spin it okay so that's the dyeing weaving so I was gonna do a project diary for my next weave and I started it and I filmed warping the, the uh, loom which was great because the cats kept getting involved and trying to rub up against the warping peg and various other things um, but uh, and actually it was too inhibiting for me because I had to stop and record everything that I was doing and I haven't got a very good setup in the kitchen. I've got my loom bolted to the breakfast bar, which is great. It's a permanent position for it and I can work on it when I want. But there isn't a place that I can put um, this laptop. It has to be perched on top of a box, on top of a box, on top of a box, which is very worrying. Um, and I, you can't really see the loom, so it's really difficult to record. And then I was thinking, oh, I want to do some weaving, but you know, I want to do this technique and I haven't filmed this technique yet, so I need to film it. And I just thought, no, it's taking all the joy out of spinning, uh, weaving for me. So I didn't do it. I'll delete it. Um, anyway, I got on with it and I finished it. <laughs> I just can't. I can't resist it. Once it's there, I absolutely love it. So I wanted this one to be different to the others in that I didn't choose a colour scheme. I wanted to choose more random, but it didn't work because um, I can't have my stash of yarns um, there in the dining room sat where I can um, see them. So I have to choose a palette of colours beforehand and then I kind of 
accidentally chosen the same palette of colours as I had for one of my first woos, which was kind of teals and purples. You know, it's not a big issue, but it's just not as different as I thought it would be. Um, a couple of disappointments. Um, let's talk you through. Let's, let's see. Um, this is one of my hand, one of my hand spuns. Where's my hand spun? Um, that's a hand spun single that I did ages ago, and I didn't know where it, I just found it. Um, Travelling inlay again. That's one of my favourite techniques. Really, really love that. Um, as you can see, five different warps again. Six even maybe. There's some roving. See the pencil roving. Not uh, that is my newest. Um, hand spun art yarn now this was the biggest disappointment really because i had done i've been i've been learning to make art yarn and you you see me learning um and it's um it's an interesting process some of it's a bit dodgy some of it's fine this was my best art yarn yet and i was really pleased with it but in fact i don't think it came out any different in the weave than the previous stuff i'd done so i guess what i need to do is make it a bit more extreme <laughs> that's what i need to do so i'm just going to quickly um show you through this. Uh, there are some different colours, there's some bursts of kind of gold and yellow which went into the other one. Um, and uh, yeah, there it is. This is really lovely. This is a bright pink silk that Linda bought me and it's got sequin beady things in it. And this is uh, Sarah's hand spun that she sent me. So I've incorporated a lot of Sarah's hand spun and a lot of my hand spun uh, art yarn and singles. Um, the clumpy lumps there, uh, yeah, oh, loved it, just loved it, there we go, so, um, I don't know what I'm calling this one, the other ones I've kind of called by the colour scheme, I don't know what to call this one, so any ideas, do put below, um, again, it's quite a wide one, and it's a pretty long one, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm building up what Tracy, Stacey Budge Camerson used to call a body of work, um, so that needs to be wet finished, so I'll give that a good wash, aiming to just not felt it as such, but just make these two sort of layers, the, the warp and the weft, just kind of join together into a, a cohesive state. Um, that was hand spun in the warp. I've not been hand spun in the warp before. That was quite exciting. I thought that was going to cause me problems, but actually it was the other end that caused me the problems. Um, this one that caused me the problems. And a very fine linen. That was really good. So yeah, there we go. Weaving. Um, okay, something new. Oh, fibres in my mouth, that's not new, is it? Right, I got my last um, Twisted Yarns box this week. So it was customised to my um, likes. And um, I will show you it. It is a dyed sock blank with my two favourite colours. That's cool, isn't it? And it's a double stranded one, so um, I can knit two identical socks. Um, I probably will actually, although what I, I'm not a big identical fan, but what I might do is um, uh, I, I can't knit the other way around, so it's the top of the because it's double stranded, so that unless I wind it onto something else. But what I could do is I could do a slightly different pattern on one to the other. That would be quite interesting, wouldn't it? So they're the same yarn, but the pattern on them is different. That's a really interesting idea. So anyway, there we go. Um, lovely, lovely. And also there was a little book. Um, oh, the potential, it says. And it's got um, conversion charts in the front and probably in the back, not sure. And yeah, and then there's cloth, uh, graph paper. No, is that what you call it? Anyway, squared paper so that you can do design notes and stuff. That's really cute. So that is the end of my yarn club. And um, as I said last time, I was hoping to start a fiber club, um, but I haven't really got that working. I um, I did order one from Spin City, um, but it turns out that that's, it's not little bits and pieces of try different things, um, it's just a bat every month, which is lovely. So, 
so um, the club is a bat every month um, and I don't think I want to have that much um, that many bats so I've um, ordered just one and then I'm still I'm still looking for an ongoing fibre club but just at the moment I've rearranged all my fibre and I actually have quite a lot um, so I probably don't really need any more but anyway it's not about need is it right uh, I've had a long break since I little gap there to uh, for the husband to come in right something new died in from and right so um uh, as part during the lockdown I've been going through our attic and getting boxes out we've got got three daughters and um, they have female cousins and we have an immense amount of clothes that have been handed down to us and been worn by one child and then put away to, to wait for the other child and then the next child wears it um, there's loads and loads of uh, clothes in our attic and Annie doesn't really um, she's not a big fan of clothes she likes gothic clothes um, but otherwise she'll just wear the same clothes all the time literally like all the way through the night and whatever so we don't use a lot of clothes for her so I've been getting stuff down um, and I've been doing a whole loads of washing to put into bags for the charity shop for when they're open again and we came across as part of this process some yarn that Annie had dyed now I'd bought a, pa a pack of undyed yarn and she with her pocket money bought one of them from me one of these skeins and she split it into a 50 gram skein and then some smaller ones now I showed you that little light blue that she dyed a smaller skein 20 or 30 grams or something and there was another one or two that she dyed in different ways um, but the 50 gram skein was this now it's sock yarn she's not going to use it she might in the future knit with um, some uh, you know, scarf yarns you know but um, she's certainly not going to knit with sock yarn so I have inherited this I love it really really pretty so it's 50 grams it's not obviously not enough to do a pair of socks but um it probably is if i do contrasting heels and toes and it would look great in a shawl you know a lot of those shawls only need 50 grams of one so yeah i'm really pleased that's that's something new it's not new but it's new um and i got the woven to wear book i talked to you about this and it arrived i'm a little disappointed to be honest um it says it's got 17 designs now what I wanted to do was I wanted to have something that would tell me give me a pattern for how to make this into some clothes basically um, I was thinking something very basic on the lines of that comes across like that that comes across like that that's sewn together there and then it's sewn together there and well, I don't know something fairly um, easy for me to do but would enable me to wear my woven cloth but this isn't really that at all um it's design stuff that you design the weaving in order to make it into something for a start which isn't really what i wanted but it's not a big problem but the projects are just they're just not me um uh, no just no um definitely no um, and that's, you know it's, it's just a scarf <laughs> so um, disappointed um, I have to say um, there were there are a couple of things that I like um, and I'm just at the moment trying to I like that um, that's the kind of simple thing um, that I that I was hoping for um, but again there's like that but it's just a scarf you know I didn't need to buy a book to be told how I could do that so I am disappointed with it I'm hoping to find um, there's some designers in the back and it shows their work um, which is great but of course there's no patterns for these these are you know really impressive designers this is quite cute but that's that's definitely more the kind of thing I was looking for um, so I need to have a really good look through it but one of the things with me <laughs> being me partly because of who I am partly because I'm autistic is that I have an expectation when I 
or did this I had the expectation was that I would be able to pick it up and think yeah great I can sew that together and make this whatever and it hasn't met that so I need time I think we all do I think maybe we should take more time when we're disappointed I need time to deal with that um, I need time to accept the fact that it's not going to be the book I thought it was um, it's going to have value but it's not going to be the value that I thought and then so I've just kind of left it in the box for a while and then another couple of days I'll pick it up and I'll say right okay what can I do with it and what so it's a process I need to go through so right now I'm just mourning the loss of the book that I thought I was ordering okay right that's all the crafty stuff let's talk about just general chat um technically we're actually into the seventh week of lockdown because um it was six weeks yesterday that the lockdown was announced so um in england we are not allowed to go out except for uh exercise once a day um shopping uh again once a day and uh essential visits to people so it's still suiting me very well and now i've kind of resolved the being alone thing it's even better we've always had a supermarket delivery every week for years and um you just take it for granted that you order something it comes <laughs> it's just as simple as that it's not like that anymore um on the one the, the the website now you can get onto it for a while you couldn't get onto it at all and then you could would be waiting for 10 minutes because of the 10,000th in the queue or whatever now you can get straight onto it so they've done a lot of work on it um but uh, a load of stuff is out of stock so i need plain flour it's out of stock i want spaghetti it's out of stock um toilet roll is back in stock um but you can do an order and then you i go and click and collect it and when they drop it off there's a load of stuff that they haven't that isn't in it a load of stuff that they've done substitutions for and the classic one classic one was last week was our first click and collect i'd order ground almonds now i eat keto which means i don't eat carbohydrates so i don't eat flour uh wheat flour but ground almond is a really good substitute so i make cakes and stuff for myself out of that i had ordered three bags of ground almonds and they'd given me three bags of flaked almonds now, I don't know if that translates to wherever you are, but it's basically just thin slices of almonds, which are no use to me. I can't make a cake out of them. But because of the coronavirus, you can't return them. So <laughs> three bags of flaked almonds. But hubby being a genius actually managed to grind them into ground almonds for me. So <laughs> that was fantastic. But so um, what we tend to do is we tend to be ordering, if you want, um, uh, say, tomatoes, tin tomatoes, quite often they'll be out of stock. So you just won't get them. Um, sometimes it will show us out of stock on the website and sometimes it won't but you just won't get them when you get your order so what we tend to do is to order two different makes two different products so that if one of them is out of stock we'll get the other um, and also because the normal products we buy are not there we're often ordering um, brand products or more expensive versions so our um, the grocery shop is so expensive right now because um, we are ordering stuff that we know we probably won't get loads of most of it um, and we're also paying more for it for a lot of stuff so it's bonkers absolutely bonkers anyway um, I started something new yesterday I watched a video on Sunday a couple of videos about goals um, and one of them was talking about micro goals and one was elastic goals um, it talked about, you know, if you have an aim to do, for example, 30 minutes of um, reading every day, um, if you don't have 30 minutes to spare or you just can't quite bring yourself to do it, then you don't do any reading at all. Um, and the idea of a micro goal is you set a goal to do two minutes of reading a day. Um, and that's something that you can achieve every day. There's no day when you can't find two minutes to read. Um, and um, the idea of that is that if even if it seems inefficient just you don't seem to be achieving much that over the, the month you will achieve more reading isn't necessarily a good example because uh sometimes it can take you a minute or so to get into your book but um the it you will over time because so often if you can't do the full 30 minutes you won't do any at all um and you give up on the goal whereas if it's you can do it every day then you don't give up on the goal but also is the inertia thing sometimes it's just getting started is the hardest thing and once you've got started you might well carry on so some days you might do two minutes but some days you might do 10 or even 30 because you've started and you carry on 
Um, and the other idea was elastic goals. So um, in that context, uh, that example, you would have um, a mini goal, which is two minutes a day, a, a, a plus goal, which is 15 minutes a day, and an elite goal, which is 30 minutes a day. So you aim to achieve one of those every day. So you've got your mini goal, um, and, but you can say, OK, today I've got a bit of extra time or I feel like I'm going to carry on and do a bit more. And then you just kind of record what you've achieved and you can use stickers or whatever. Anyway, I talked to the girls about this at the weekend and um, on Monday morning I started HIT, high intensity impact training. Um, and I had started it before three times a week and it's, it, you know, it's not a lot really compared to a, um, a 5k run or whatever. It's not very much at all. But I had still dropped off with it. So I decided to do one um, session. So I, I thought a minute, but actually uh, 30 seconds is more appropriate for, for HIT for me, for my age and um, fitness level. So um, came down yesterday morning and Annie was up. So we did it together. We did a 30, uh, a 60 second as it was uh, running on the spot. And at the end of that, I was totally <gasps> and uh, I had a shower. This morning I came down. Unfortunately, she wasn't awake, so we couldn't do it together. But I actually did five 30 second um, bursts with 90 seconds in between. So the idea is basically every single morning I come down before my shower and I do one 30 second burst so that increases my heart rate for 30 seconds which is always good for the heart and for longevity to um get your heart rate uh, heart rate up and then back down again um and then some days i'll do more so that's started yesterday i'll let you know how that goes next time um and the other thing was um i've been saying for a while that i'm really thirsty all the time my throat is so dry well i just thought why not just go ahead and set a goal on this because you know people talk about the goal of doing 10,000 steps a day and you do this for 30 days and it does all this good stuff people also talk about drinking a gallon of water a day um and for those of you who like me don't know what a gallon is it's four and a half liters or eight pints um and i am so thirsty at the moment that i thought i could easily do that so i started aiming to drink a gallon of water a day now i have a fitbit which i absolutely love and it has an app uh, where you can record your fluid intake. So what I've done is I've measured um, my mug. This is 450 milliliters. A pint is 570. Um, and my next favorite mug is 400 and a regular mug is 300. So <clears throat> when I drink tea or water, I, I, the only things I include, well, the only things I drink actually is water, green tea and mint tea. And they're all, as far as I'm concerned, water. Um, green tea is probably slightly better water um but that's that's all it is so um i have now done two full weeks of drinking a gallon a day and i can't feel any different to be honest <laughs> the only problem is yesterday i drank i try and drink two and a half liters in the morning and then i've got two in the afternoon um and i didn't really drink much in the afternoon i don't know why so in the evening i had a liter and a half to drink so i drank it which is basically three pints um and then i was up twice in the night it's not good um but okay so i need to concentrate more on doing it so yeah anybody else tried that gallon of water a day it's not a big issue for me so i have a pint first thing in the morning i usually have apple cider vinegar but i've run out um and then i have a pot of green tea and that is about two and a half of these um then i have a second pot usually that i finish in the afternoon and then i have mint tea because i try not to drink green tea it's got some caffeine in it Okay, I'm rambling. Right. Okay. We're good. So, um, I was planning, wasn't I, to start the pair of socks for my daughter, but I didn't, I don't know, I think I was a bit worried because I had the willow, which was the brioche, and I had the uh, knitted socks, and I also had the um, uh, Van Gogh, and I just felt that I wasn't giving them all enough attention. I didn't want to start another knitting project. So I started two crochet projects. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so I will crack on with what I've got. I doubt I'll start anything new unless I suddenly decide to do another interlocking crochet square, which right now I feel quite tempted to. But I do have two more squids to make, don't I? Okay, right. Um, thank you for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed it, click the thumbs up and all that normal stuff. Um, I've got to think of a way to give away those second, those last two skeins. Um, 
Okay, give me um, put, pop a comment below if you've got any ideas. And all the other stuff. Pop a comment about anything because it's fun. And also join the Rainbow um, Lockdown Rainbow Sock Cal if you're interested. Right, happy crafting and I will see you next week.